Hello everybody and welcome. Yes, I am in the garage today. It's hot and humid outside, so I'll be doing all these tests here in the big garage. Yeah, this is where I keep all my vehicles. You see the Cybertruck in the background. Today we're gonna to talk about something unique. It's not a Cybertruck, it's not a Tesla. However, it's a product made by a company called Electron. They've jumped into making all kinds of adapters for EVs and all of them that I've ever used have been excellent. However, this latest one is less than that. So let me show you what I bought. This is the product I bought. This is an adapter that allows me to take a supercharger NAX connector and connect it to a CCS1 for my Rivian and my Ford. And I wanted a backup. Ford sent me a couple adapters which work well. Of course, they're designed and built by Tesla. I'm still waiting for my Rivian. Hello Rivian, where's my adapter? Anyway, so for the Rivian, I was forced to uh, buy an adapter. This one came uh, recommended by several people. Uh, it's Vortex. Uh, this is a version 2, by the way. The first version of the Vortex plug had a problem. It was so easy to plug onto an AX connector, but the latch did not work. You could easily pull it off. And if you pulled it off by mistake, you'd have problems because if it was in the middle of charging, you could result in a, what's called an arc flash. An arc flash is something that happens when you disconnect a high voltage circuit under power. Of course, then there was a recall. NHTSA forced these guys to do a recall and they came out with a version two Vortex plug. I had placed my order just about that time and it was delayed and this one apparently is the latest one. I plug it onto a NAX connector on the supercharger, plug it into the car and all is good. So you know me, Mr. Electronics, I wanted to test it. Knowing that a NAX connector is a NAX connector is a NAX connector, I fashion my version two wall connectors here which use NAX connectors. So let's have a look here. This is a NAX connector, North American charging standard. It's Tesla's connector and it's been adopted. As you can see, it's quite elegant. There's two high voltage, high current connections that work both in DC and AC, and then a ground there in the center and the left and the right are the signal pins to ensure that the connection is properly connected into the vehicle before power is applied. So can you pull this out of the car while it's charging? Uh-uh, because it's also designed with a latch. If we take a quick look here, you see this little square thing here? That's the latch. When you plug it into a Tesla, you hear it lock and a little pin flies into here and keeps you from pulling this out while the circuit is under power. In this particular case, it saves you from uh, problems. If you would pull any type of energized circuit, you could get an arc, maybe damaging the contacts, and that is not what you want to do. So this is a standard NAX connector. It's hooked over there to the version 2 wall connector. So I thought, hey, I'm not going to some supercharger when I've heard some things about this that could be a problem. I don't want to pull this thing out hot. So I plugged it into my NAX connector, connected to my wall connector. And here's what it looks like. It plugged right in. It all looks really good. It's good quality. The uh, assembly of it is pretty nice here. And here is the switch and if we listen you can hear it right so there's the latch it's pretty simple let me see if i can spin it around here let me uh get a little different view here so this is the ejector and the latch so let's have a look at their connector here i put it on uh, uh to my nax connector same as what you'd find at a supercharger and i wanted to see if i could pull this out and not push this button. 
Well, turns out I can't pull it out without pushing the button. That was really great. However, we got a problem, Houston. Here is the release button. It's pretty simple. You push here and it raises the point at which it latches. And if you uh, look at the NAX connector here on the other plug, it pulls the pin out of that little hole there. So it seems pretty simple, right? You push it down and it opens up. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've had two of my friends come over. Depressing this, I cannot get the NAX connector out of the adapter. So like any good customer, I contacted Electron. They got right back to me to tell me that there's been some issues and they sent me some instructions on how to release it. First one was uh, put it into the vehicle. This allows this to be retained. I can then depress this and pull the connector out. So I tried. Uh-uh. No soap, Charlie. What I'm going to do now, per Electron's instructions, is to use a vice grip by compressing this enough, and hopefully I can get this out. I happen to have a welder vice grip. I got this from my welder. This was made by my buddy Bert, who is now a silent key. If you're a ham radio operator, you'll know that. Anyway, what he did is he took a conventional vice grips here and welded on uh, this giant key, make it easier. But other than that, it's just your basic vice grips. You essentially open it up and you tighten it up to fit your work, compress it. And when you get to the very last, it locks. And that is going to be what was recommended here. I'm going to try to do this in front of the camera. What I'm going to do essentially is put the vice grips between the button and the top here, not onto this part. And let's uh, set that up here. I hope you can see this. The vice grips is attached. I've compressed it. And uh, this is what was told to me to do. If we take a quick look here, we can kind of see the retaining part of the switch up slightly. And it's almost level with the housing here. And uh, I, like I say, I've compressed it. It's on there enough. It's, uh, I don't want to squish it too bad, but it's compressed. Let's see if I can get this out of here now. <coughs> Hold on. Oh, I did it. Okay. Well, there you go. That is how to remove a NAX connector from your adapter. When you go on a trip and you have one of these Vortex adapters, here's what you do. You carry yourself a vice grips, and I would recommend you go and buy a welder vice grips just like this. That allows you to reach around your adapter. Keep it handy because what you're going to need to do is if you plug it into the supercharger, otherwise this adapter will stay on forever. You use your vice grips per their instructions and compress the latch and be able to remove it from the supercharger. That's the best I can tell you what to do if you have a Vortex version 2. Perhaps one day they'll fix it so it works properly, but at this point... This is what you're going to get. You buy the Vortex, buy Electron, and buy one of these. You can get it at a welding supply, perhaps uh, the hardware store. Keep this handy with your Vortex and you're good. If you like this video, give me a like. Pass it on to your friends that have one of these because they may need to buy this to remove it. Thanks for watching. I'll look for you in the next video and take care.